Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for so many of you being here today. I really appreciate it. Today is a special day on several counts. First, we'll be announcing the programs and events that will mark the Widener Center for the Performing Arts 25th anniversary. And second, this is my first season announcement at the Widener Center. Thank you. I've had the pleasure of meeting and getting to know many of you in the last six months, but for those I haven't, I am Kelly Strickland. I'm the executive and artistic director of the Widener Center, and I have the tremendous privilege today of sharing with you our plans for the coming year. Since it's my first season, I wanted to do something uh, rather fun, a little bit different. I wanted to have some surprises and some, some live performances and some... Uh, Hi, Tweak. What, what are you doing here? Hi, I heard it was season audition time. Uh, oh, no, I, I'm very sorry, Tweak. It's not season auditions, it's the season announcement. Oh, I see. I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, uh, you see, it's just that most of our performances include, well, you know, uh, humans, people. Perhaps you will indulge me. I've prepared a little something, and well, maybe I could change your mind. Oh, gosh, Tweak, you're putting me in sort of an awkward position. We have a lot to get through, and well, uh, uh, okay, just so long as it doesn't take too long. No, Tweak, I'm sorry. There just, there isn't a spot in the season for you. But that was really wonderful. You, you clearly worked very hard to prepare. I'm, I'm very sorry. Maybe next year. I really hate to discourage an aspiring artist. Special thanks to the College of Engineering, Science, Engineering, and Technology, Dean Caters, Dr. Anker, and Tweek's handler, Sally Petty. They all had a hand, hand in Tweek preparing for her audition today. <laughs> Throughout our time together this afternoon, you will hear other UW Green Bay departments mentioned. My favorite words are partnership and collaboration. And in my first six months, I've greatly enjoyed getting to know my colleagues on faculty and staff as we noodle up new ways to work together and explore the many ways that the arts intersect with other disciplines. I'm new to the area, but here are a few things I've picked up. Our campus and region are about to undergo some major changes with the newly approved addition of a School of Engineering, the visionary STEM Center and its new home, in Phoenix Innovation Park, 
The Greater Green Bay Chamber of Commerce is all in on innovation as a path toward a healthy, vibrant Northeast Wisconsin. This is great news for the arts and culture community. Some have said, but Kelly, that sounds like a lot of energy focused on things that are not the arts. Or some have said, Kelly, we need STEAM, not STEM. But this is the secret we know, that true innovation is built on the principle of turning the usual way of doing something on its head, the act of taking a chance, the courage to stray from the pack. That is the stuff of the arts. History is littered with examples of how powerful harnessing both arts and science or industry can be. Steve Jobs repeatedly commented on the fact that Apple's best engineers were accomplished musicians and writers. Nikola Tesla espoused the writing of poetry as a method to keep creativity flowing and dispel that innovation killer, rigid thought. Benjamin Franklin played the violin, the harp, the guitar, and was a composer in his own right. The idea of a submarine was dreamt up not by a scientist, but a novelist, as it first appeared in Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Leonardo da Vinci gave us the first designs for a flying machine and scuba gear and the Mona Lisa. About 10 years ago, I had the privilege of teaching a brown bag series on creativity <clears throat> at the Google headquarters in Chicago. After a particularly lively afternoon of improv and theater games, and these games are designed specifically to increase focus and to uh, decrease the rejection, rejection of implausible ideas. One of the software engineers sent me a note to let me know that the afternoon of our session, he had 37 new ideas and one of them was even excellent. Every scientist, inventor, engineer, and artist will tell you, you can't have the one excellent idea without the other 200, 100, or 36 mediocre and maybe even dumb ideas. I do not believe that the Widener Center is just a building. I believe that it is an idea, an incubator, a tool to be used to advocate and champion for creativity and the arts in our community. So what does that look like? I look forward to sharing that with you today. But first, I have the honor of introducing University of Wisconsin Green Bay's Chancellor, Gary Miller. Thank you, uh, Kelly, and uh, welcome to this wonderful evening of uh, celebration of the Widener Center and its history and thinking forward about what we'll, we'll do. I hope you can understand after listening to Kelly why we're so optimistic about the future of the Widener Center. Uh, every good organization and every good uh, complex organization requires exceptional leadership. We feel very, very fortunate to have her with us. Uh, and she's just beginning and already we have robots on stage. And so I'd like to ask you to Give her another round of applause and appreciation for what's to come. So. This is the 25th uh, anniversary year of the Widener, so we have a lot to celebrate, and that's why this opening is so important. And I just want to uh, let everybody know here that this is a signature part of this university, but it's also going to be become a signature part of this region. After July 1st, the University of Wisconsin Green Bay will have a footprint in about 16 counties from Sheboygan up to Marinette. We see an entire arts and music cult corridor in that area. Uh, Kelly's already been out talking to people in all these communities. The Widener Center will be the center of that and what we're doing on campus will be the center of that. But it's our responsibility and our great privilege to drive the arts and music in this region. And so this is a fabulous time to have a 25th anniversary of the Widener Center. I'd like to recognize a few board members who are in attendance uh, today representing the Widener Center Presents Board, uh, Fred Schmidt, uh, Robin Davis, uh, Joel Bogenschutz, and Bev French are with us, I hope. Let's give them a round of applause. 
And representing the Widener Advisory Board, Marge Widener, Lori Stiles, and Allison Walker, let's give them a round of applause. You'll hear more from the uh, University's Theater Music uh, this season but and in just a moment, but I want to give you a sample of what's to come. I'd like to introduce musical theater major Faith, uh, Faith Glick, uh, and accompanied by Emily Scalufa, performing I Just Want to Be a Star. I became a nun at a very early age. I had to choose between the convent and a life upon the stage. So when Reverend Mother said we're putting on a show, I must tell you, I was thrilled to death. I couldn't wait to go. Well now, to my surprise, Reverend Mother, what was so obvious, the stage was meant for me. Money and fame I don't desire. I only want a sparkle. I'm not here to start a fire, you see. I don't care if I'm ever rich or famous. I just want to be a star. I don't care if you know what my name is. I just want to be a star. I want to be the nun who makes you cheer, the nun who's out in front instead of in the rear. For once, I want to lead the band and have the crowd in the palm of my hand. Oh, I don't care if I'm ever rich or famous, just so I can be a star. When we began this show, they were really green. They didn't know a chorus line from a chorus queen. They didn't realize that in the chorus line, you never get to strut your stuff. You never really shine. Oh, I don't care if I'm ever rich or famous. I just want to be a star. Sure, it's true that my only claim to fame is I got what it takes to be a star. I know my vows of poverty mean I can't make a fortune, but when we're 80 and sitting on the porch in the old nun's home and they ask who we are, I just want to say, hey, I want Well, thank you so much, Faith and Emily. That was great. Hi, I am uh, Jeff Entwistle, a.k.a. Big Santa in these parts. Uh, and uh, I'm the current chairperson of theater and dance at UW-Green Bay. So please let me welcome you to the announcement of our 2018-2019 theater and dance season. So many of you out there may not know it, but uh, playwright Lauren Gunderson holds the title as America's most produced playwright for 2017-2018. And UWGB seems to uh, have done its best to help her keep that ranking. We just finished a season that ended with two Lauren Gunderson plays, our beautiful production of Silent Sky uh, and her revenge comedy, Exit, Pursued by a Bear. We're just done this, uh, this past month. Well, in October, 
the 12th to be exact, uh, we'll open our season with Lauren Gunderson's newly published play, The Revolutionists. Um, it's a story about four beautiful, badass women. Um, they lose their heads in this irreverent, girl-powered comedy set during the French Revolution's reign of terror. Playwright Olympe de Gouget, assassin Charlotte Corday, former, uh, former queen and fan of ribbons, Marie Antoinette, and Haitian rebel Marianne Angel. Uh, they hang out, murder Marat, and they try to beat back the extremist insanity in 1793 Paris. Uh, this grand and dream-tweaked comedy is about violence uh, and legacy, art and activism, feminism and terrorism, compatriots and chosen sisters, and how we actually go about changing the world. It's a true story, or total fiction, or a play about a play, uh, or a raucous resurrection uh, that ends in a song and a scaffold. One thing we do know, we're probably one of the very first theater programs in the country to produce this newly published play. And it will be our participating entry in the American College Theater Festival that will be hosted in Madison during the coming year. Uh, next, for our musical, this coming November, and you just happened to hear Faith sing a song from that show, um, Nonsense the Mega Musical uh, by Dan Goggin. Nonsense begins with the Little Sisters of Hoboken, and they discover that their cook, Sister Julia, child of God, has accidentally poisoned 52 of the sisters, and they are in dire need of funds for the burials. Well, the sisters decide the best way to raise the money is to put on a variety show, so they take over the school auditorium, which is currently set up for the eighth grade production of Grease. Um, featuring wonderful characters, tap and ballet dancing, an audience quiz, comic surprises, um, this show has become an international phenomenon and has been translated into 21 different languages. All the fun of the original nonsense uh, has now been supersized, if you will. Uh, and now it's bigger and better than ever. It would be a real sin to pass up the opportunity to come see this one. <clears throat> Next on our season is Women Playing Hamlet by William Missouri Downs. It's directed by John Mariano in the Gene Widener Theater. Hamlet's a challenge for any actor. But when Jessica is cast as the titular character in a New York production, it sends her into an existential tailspin. Uh, it doesn't help that her acting coach is borderline abusive or that every Starbucks barista with an MFA tells her she's too young for the role um, or that some, she somehow managed to make Sir Patrick Stewart her nemesis. Not to mention the fact that she's a woman. How can Jessica figure out to be or not to be when she can't even figure out herself. And while featuring an all-female cast performing multiple roles, Women Playing Hamlet has been called a, a rip-roaring fun for Shakespeare fans and haters alike. Next, we will present our, our annual DanceWorks concert uh, under the artistic direction with major choreography by Denise Carlson Gardner in the University Theater. Join us as we celebrate dance in this annual concert of faculty and student choreography representing a diverse medley of styles. With a choreography class this coming fall, it always bodes well for a very active and dynamic variety of student choreography. So the final show of our season will be Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. It's being directed by guest artist uh, Alan Kapischke, also um, taking place in University Theater. Julius Caesar is a conquering hero and a popular leader in Rome. So popular, some want to make him king. What is the responsibility of Rome's other leading citizens to oppose and resist this threat to Rome's democracy? 
How far will they go may be influenced by their own aspirations. Our production it will employ a vigorous staging of Shakespeare's uncompromising look at the failures of both the leaders and the citizenry in a time of crisis. So now in the, wor in the words of one of my favorite uh, nighttime uh, talk show hosts, John Oliver, and now this. <clears throat> I'd like to share with you some other special productions connected directly to UW-Green Bay Theater and Dance. We have two students this coming year directing studio productions, both of them late in the fall semester. Selena Deer will be directing the Assassin's Anthology uh, on December 6th, 7th, and 8th at 7.30 in the Gene Widener Theater, and it is written by none other than Selena Deer. Uh, Selena's been working on the script for about a year now, and uh, this past year, she gave a public reading of the script. So in this, her senior year, she will get the opportunity to direct her own original play. Uh, it's a great experience. Well, I had a horrific experience doing it. We'll never write another play as long as I live. Um, but Selena <laughs> may be on a better path. Uh, Haley Ebenall, who played the lead in that Laura Gunderson play, uh, Exit, Pursued by a Bear, uh, this past spring, well, she will direct the studio production as well this coming fall. There will be a selection of scenes from a collection of, work of works of different authors, A uh, Woman Alone. And Haley is also working on the development of an additional devised piece as part of this performance based on Maya Angelou's poem, Still I Rise. Uh, these are both very creative and intelligent and driven young women. And with Faith today as an example, you can see why I enjoy hanging out in the theater department with these really creative and intelligent artists that are growing up right before our eyes. <clears throat> then, in um, something new is happening July 1. Officially, we become a larger UW-Green Bay campus as we will be joined um, officially by some colleagues from uh, UW Marinette and UW Sheboygan. So I'd also like to share uh, with you a little theater information from our new colleagues um, on those two campuses. This summer on July 13 to 15 and 20 to 22, You're in Town the Musical, it's a great show we did here back in, in 2007, will be presented at Theater on the Bay on the Marinette campus. Then from November 9th to the 11th and 16th to 18th, Marinette will produce Sarah Rule's play Eurydice, which retells and somewhat reimagines uh, the myth of Orpheus from the perspective of Eurydice, his wife. In April, Marinette will produce Agatha Christie's classic The Mousetrap on April 5th to 7th and April 12th to 14. You can still see the original production still playing in London where it began in 1952. That was four years before I was born. <clears throat> then at uh, UW Sheboygan, Thomas Campbell will be producing and directing Samuel Beckett's Endgame on November 14th through the 17th. And in the spring, Another great show we happened to do back in 2012, he will be directing Charles Mee's Bob Rauschenberg, America. This is our first public welcome to our colleagues and theater students at the Marinette and Sheboygan campuses. So let's look forward to a, a great future working together. So <clears throat> please come join us in the theater. Uh, for some fun and exciting season at UW Green Bay Theater and Dance. And now I'd just like to welcome uh, out here the uh, big kahuna, I think I saw him backstage, um, uh, Randy Mater, to introduce the UW Green Bay music season for the coming year. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Santa. I, uh, I hope I'm still on the good list. <laughs> We're really excited uh, about the upcoming season uh, in the UW-Green Bay Music Program this year. As always, we have a very busy year ahead with dozens of events planned that will utilize nearly all of the different performance spaces on our campus. 
there's not really enough time to talk about all of them, so I'd like to just mention a few. As a vibrant academic performing arts program, we offer many opportunities for our students to showcase their talent and hard work. Students in our large ensembles are extremely fortunate to be able to perform in this very room, Coffrin Family Hall, which is one of the most acoustically beautiful concert halls in all of the, men, uh, in all of the Midwest, as you, can, as you can hear if you've been here at any time. The choirs, bands, and orchestra will present a total of eight different concerts uh, between October and May, right on this stage. Our 6.30 concert series will be in its sixth full season. Kelly will be talking about this in a few minutes, so I'll, I'll leave most of the details to her. But I would like to give a shout out to our annual Very Small Consortium uh, performance, which happens in February. Uh, and it features works submitted to us by composers from around the world that are either one minute long or shorter, or contain uh, 100 or fewer notes. So they're all these, these really small compositions. Which, there's a very small theme that goes along with it. Uh, and uh, we always, it's always a favorite with our regular uh, uh, audience attenders, and uh, we always like to say, if you don't like one of the compositions, don't worry about it, no worries. None of them last very long anyway. A couple of other highlights for this year will include uh, the UWGB choirs presenting Handel's Messiah uh, on December 1st with orchestra and some guest choirs from the area. And also on January 27th, it'll be the 49th annual Jazz Fest. Uh, Lots of other things going on, but to close out the academic year, we'll once again welcome thousands of students from across the region to our campus for the WSMA State Soul and Ensemble Festival, and that's on May 3 and 4 of 2019. But our season doesn't even end there, even though that's the end of the semester, because in June, we host the WSMA State Honors Music Camps, when a few hundred of the best and brightest high school musicians from around the state will come in for an intensive week of rehearsals and performances. And for two weeks in July, our own UW Green Bay band, choir, and orchestra camps will take place, first with a week of middle schoolers, followed by a week with high school students. We'll have dozens of other performances throughout the upcoming season, so be sure to visit WidenerCenter.com to see our full schedule. We hope to see you often. Now I'll turn things back over to the Widener Center's Executive and Artistic Director, Kelly Strickland. Thanks, Jeff and Randy. In addition to our university artists, the Widener has long partnered with our community performing arts colleagues. This year, we're proud to present a newly named and designed Creative Green Bay series, featuring the stellar work that is presented and produced by Brown County Civic Music Association, Doctors in Recital, the Civic Symphony, and the Dudley Birder Chorale of St. Norbert College. This series highlights the excellent artistic work and curation being done by our neighbors. I'd like to ask some folks to stand, if I might. Rita and Bruce Kilmer, Board of Directors, Brown County Civic Music Association. They didn't sit in their, in their lit seats. <laughs> Lucinda Roberts, executive producer, Doctors in Recital. Susan Slickers, chair and president, Doctors in Recital. Paul Grawl, board of directors, Civic Symphony of Green Bay. And Tom Hamilton, board of directors for Dudley Birders Chorale and St. Norbert's College. Please stand so that your community can thank you for your ongoing work to keep the arts vibrant in Green Bay. Thank you all very much. And now, I'd like to share with you a short video that features some of the titles, images, and clips from the works that you will see on our stages during the Widener's 25th anniversary season. <laughs>
This year's season planning began by taking stock of the activities and ideas specific to our community. What is meaningful to us right now in this moment? The title Currents is a world-class example of 21st century spectacle theater, fusing percussion, performance, music, and media. Currents is inspired by the historical battle the historical battle of currents between Thomas Edison and Nikola, Nikola Tesla in their quest for finding energy sources for the world. The artistic collective that created currents, Mayumana, takes its name from the Hebrew word meaning Hebrew word meyumanut, meaning skill, and features performers from 16 different countries. International artists collaborating to mine a defining chapter of American invention for multidisciplinary artistic inspiration. That's innovation. By hosting National Geographic's leading scientific minds and documentarians, and by partnering with UW-Green Bay's Department of Psychology and Public Policy to produce the inaugural UW, TEDx UW-Green Bay event, we will facilitate the exchange and exploration of knowledge, not in sound bites, not in BuzzFeed two-minute videos, but by sharing the air with the leading minds of their fields. Cirque Mechanics, a self-proclaimed menagerie of mechanical marvels, returned the Widener, using circuits, circus arts traditional and nouveau, combined with mechanical acumen to delight all ages. Up to 100 area high school and university science and engineering students will have the opportunity to work with Cirque Mechanics while they are here, learning how the principles of physics can be used to mystify audiences. In our Raise the Curtain series, we feature some of our theatrical titles. Just in time for Halloween, the outstanding Aquila Theater from New York will be here with their production of Frankenstein, along with the tours of Broadway productions Legally Blonde, Rain, and Finding Neverland. Based on the Academy Award-winning film with Johnny Depp and Kate Winslet, this Broadway musical is a timeless story about the power of imagination and spectacular proof that you never really have to grow up. Perhaps one of the concerts that I'm most excited about next season is La Santa Cecilia, whom I first heard on the Tiny Desk Concert Series, if you're familiar with that. This Grammy award-winning band and recording artist for the Pixar soundtrack Coco is so dynamic, eclectic, and plain fun, fusing klezmer, bossa nova, tango, and rumba. They defy categorization. But to sweeten the experience, we've invited nationally renowned Juvenil Mariachi, who happened to be just down the road in Milwaukee to join La Santa Cecilia. This youth mariachi group, comprised of classically trained strings artists, has toured all over the country and has performed and recorded with the LA-based La Santa Cecilia. While in Green Bay, we will work to connect these young artists with our own local youth mariachi artists, as well as provide them, provide them with a taste of college life here at UW Green Bay. We are excited to partner with Student Life and the Music Department on those activities. We will hear the angelic harmonies of the priests sing sacred and holiday music, and in our Where It's At Jazz series, we bring you favorites, the Glenn Miller Orchestra, and a special headliner for the 49th annual Jazz Fest, The Bad Plus, whom the New York Times calls the most important and inimitable act in improvised music. And Rolling Stone magazine writes, by any standard, jazz or otherwise, it is moving mighty music bad to the bone, hot players with hard rock hearts. If you are a jazz aficionado or an aspiring jazz aficionado, there is a great short documentary from Jazz Night in America on YouTube called The Band That Never Stops, and it will surely convince you that you need to see this concert. We're doubling down on jazz next season, and that is in no small part because of the rich history here at University of Wisconsin Green Bay. Next year is Jazz Fest's 49th anniversary, and Bad Plus will be the closing concert of that two-day festival next January. But we're also celebrating jazz because of collaborations with some of the truly talented and fun musicians from the music department. I have so greatly enjoyed getting to know them from their concerts and gigs around town, whether it's the local band The Gypsy Trip, the Green Bay Jazz Orchestra, or the outstanding 630 series, which I'll talk about more in a bit. 
But let's take a short break from the titles and enjoy The King of Swing, Glenn Miller, with a musical interlude brought to you by some of those same esteemed music faculty I just referenced. Adam Gaines playing trumpet, John Salerno on piano, Bill Salek on percussion, and Michael Dewhurst on bass playing you Moonlight Serenade. Ensuring that the music never stops, our creative Green Bay partners will bring their gifts to our stages. The Doctors will return for their 13th annual musical variety show. The Civic Symphony of Green Bay will appear with special guest Bayport High School Chamber Orchestra in a program entitled Unfinished Potential. Brown County Civic Music Association will ensure that the Wood family organ is showcased in their concert with organist Raul Prieto Ramirez. And we will finish our spring program with Brown County Civic Music Association's closing concert, the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. 
and the music keeps going. We will proudly continue to host the Music Department 630 series, a free concert series in Fort Howard Hall, curated by Professor Michelle McQuaid Dewhurst and performed by Music Department faculty with special guest artists, including the Florentine Opera, and Acros Percussion Collective. And there is a hot off the presses edition to the 630 series titles that I only learned about a couple of days ago and I know one person for sure who will be very excited about it. Warren Gerds in his year in review for 2017 placed Professor Dewhurst McQuaid's newly composed film score for the silent film Metropolis in the number one spot for best local productions. Next season, Professor Dewhurst McQuaid will premiere a brand new film score composed for the 1929 silent film, Man with a Movie Camera. Rounding out both the jazz series and as a special event benefiting the 630 series so that we can keep it a free series is what I very much hope will become an annual holiday tradition. There's no place like Swing for the Holidays is a celebration of the holiday tunes of Ella Fitzgerald. Featuring the vocals of soprano and faculty member Courtney Sherman, who if you saw Verity's Requiem a week or two ago just blew the roof off the place, and the stylings of the Green Bay Jazz Orchestra along with other music faculty musicians. But that is only the start of the holiday festivities here at the Ridener. The Broadway tour of How the Grinch Stole Christmas will move into the Widener for a week and a half in November to tech the full national tour before jump-starting a sleigh ride around the country. We look forward to hosting Max, the Grinch, Cindy Lou Who, and the Who, all the Who's of Whoville as they get ready for their busy holiday season. Charlie Brown and his Broadway crew will drop in right before Santa arrives on Christmas Eve with a Charlie Brown Christmas. And as Randy mentioned earlier, UW Green Bay's Biennial Messiah returns this season, along with the time-honored annual tradition of Dudley Birder Corral's Holiday Pops and the evergreen favorite, Mannheim Steamroller. If you hear a single bah humbug around this town, it will not be our fault. And since you are now inevitably thinking about your Christmas shopping, there will be events for the whole family who will love the Disney Junior Dance Party, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, and the internationally acclaimed Mermaid Theater Company of Nova Scotia's beautiful, poignant, and perfect for our youngest audience members, the Rainbow Fish. Mermaid Theatre Company is one of my favorite family theatrical producers. About six years ago, I had the good fortune of seeing their production of Goodnight Moon, which moved me to such tears that the five-year-old sitting next to me asked me if I was afraid of moons. When I told him, no, I wasn't, he said, it's okay if you are. He was a really supportive audience member. As laughter is one of the great uniters, we'd be remiss to not include the chance for a few chuckles. With wildly different styles and subject matter, Sebastian Mansicola, Tim Hawkins, and David Sedaris all offer their humorous takes on the world we live in. Late Night Tailgate offers a slightly different format for the funny, aimed at the sports ball enthusiasts, and I'm told there are one or two of those in this area. The creative team behind Saturday Night Live has assembled former NFL linebacker Takeo Spikes, who if you did not know this, is an accomplished photographer in his NFL retirement, and a team of comedians to make up a panel that features sports commentary, trivia, prizes, and comedy for a truly unique live event. While we're on the subject of sports, there is another anniversary besides ours next year. While the Widener celebrates its 25th season, the Packers, am I pronouncing that correctly? I'm from Chicago and I only know how to pronounce Cubs. But yes, the Packers will celebrate their 100th season. We thought about the best way we could celebrate this flagship Green Bay institution and we hatched upon something special. For the first time in Widener's history, we will self-produce a sit-down theatrical run, and no subject was more fitting than Lombardi himself. 
Gentlemen, listen up. All of you know this is my first season here in Green Bay. One thing about the Packers, it's a team with a great tradition. And that tradition has been developed through one thing only, and that's pride. Now, how do you develop pride? Pride is developed by a winning tradition. I'm only here because I want to win. Gentlemen, the only difference between any one player in this league or any team in the league is an energy. This is a cruel game. Therefore, you have got to give everything that is in you. You have got to keep yourself in prime physical condition because fatigue will make cowards of us all. Gentlemen, I have never been a part of a losing tradition and I do not intend to start now. From here on in, you will talk like, you will look like, and you will act like the most dignified professionals in your hometown. For the goal here is to make the Green Bay Packers the Yankees of professional football. And anyone here who doesn't like it is perfectly free to get the hell out right now. There are planes, trains, and buses leaving here every day. And if you don't produce for me, you're going to find yourself on one of them. Thank you to Noah Simon for playing Lombardi for us today. Our production of Lombardi by playwright Eric Simonson will be directed by Greg Winkler, the artistic director of Peninsula Players. And finally, the 25th anniversary season launches with a look back to the inaugural event held in Coffrin Family Hall. One of the performers during that January 1993 evening was Wayne Lynn, an 11-year-old violinist and featured performer of the Youth Orchestra at that time. Since then, Wayne completed his bachelor's degree at the Juilliard School and his master's degree at the Yale School of Music. He is now the associate and acting concert master of the Seoul Philharmonic Orchestra. Wayne returns home this fall to Green Bay and to the Widener stage as a soloist in the opening anniversary symphony orchestra concert event. During that concert, he will reunite with the orchestra of his youth for a piece before a full orchestral concert. Believe it or not, <laughs> There's more that we don't have time to include today. <laughs> there will be informal salons, pre-show conversations, talkbacks with artists, dinners, but I hope you will agree that this coming year be, will be rich with the activities that make a center like ours vibrant and relevant to our community. We launched a campaign shortly after I arrived called hashtag my Widener moment. Via social media, people shared anecdotes, photos, and videos about their Widener memories. You may have seen some of them pre-show looping in here, and you'll see them again afterwards in the lobby during the reception. I'm so glad we did that, because early in my stay here, it impressed upon me the importance of our work here. We create defining and memorable moments for people. We believe that we have a responsibility of cultural citizenship to you. How do we connect people in times of digital isolation? How can we bring serenity and joy amidst a barrage of media and screens? How do we engender curiosity, kindness, and creativity in our youngest patrons? We can't wait to have you back in the fall. In fact, in preparation for your arrival, we will be sprucing up the grand foyer and lobby spaces so that our incredibly special building looks its very best. I have a few thank yous that I'd like to offer to the many folks who contributed both to today's announcement and also the ongoing work of the Widener Center. To our extraordinary lean and mean staff, these folks work day in and day out to support what is oftentimes an overwhelming amount of activity in this building. For our crack production team, that sometimes means literally around the clock. Paul Heim, Kelly DeJardin, Drew Arnold, and Tracy Cook. Thank you to the Empress of the Front of House, Elizabeth Anderson, and the Legion of Volunteers, many of whom are here today, and there are so many of them, I cannot name them all, but they are indispensable to our operation. Diane Nagy Marketing and the entire university marketing team that supports her and helps us out when we need it. 
Troy Williams, who has overseen the media for today. And finally, the right and left hands of the center, Brock Neverman and Stephanie Malford. Some days I'm quite certain without them, the building would actually fall down around my ears. Thank you to Chrome Agency for their creativity, efficiency, and being exemplar collaborators. They are responsible for our incredibly fun look that you will see all over town in the coming year and on the brochure, which will be available in the grand foyer. Thank you to our boards of directors and a general thank you to the university and community at large for welcoming me and being so supportive. We will now be recessing to the grand foyer to raise a glass in honor of our anniversary. There is cake. You will also be able to pick up a copy of our event guide. I hope you will join us and thank you for coming.